Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Lindsay Bowman. I am a transplant pharmacist at Tampa General Hospital in Tampa, Florida, and I am joined today with Dr. Lisa Potter, who is also a transplant pharmacist and has a lot of experience and expertise in the way of transplant pharmacy, as well as medication access. So thank you, Lisa, for joining us. If you wouldn't mind to introduce yourself and talk to us a little bit about um, your experience with med access. Sure, uh, thank you and thanks to AST for the invitation. I am always happy to talk about <clears throat> these types of issues because, um, as a transplant pharmacist and caring for transplant patients, uh, we know and the and transplant recipients know that the success of their transplant relies on these meds. Um, but getting medications is not always an easy or straightforward thing, especially in this United States healthcare system that we operate in. So um, to answer your question about my experience in med access, it, it truly stems from just caring for our recipients day in and day out and witnessing what happens when we send a prescription, um, the times when it's not filled, what's the reason it's not filled, or if it's not covered, what's the reason it's not covered. And I would say 90%, maybe even more, um, a majority of the time, there are some hoops to jump through, like prior authorizations, maybe assistance programs, but there's a solution to most problems. Every once in a while, a problem will pop up, though, that is just a real doozy or maybe doesn't have a solution. So it's really um, spending time diving into those situations to try and fix our healthcare system, if that's possible or where that's possible, uh, is what, what has become my professional interest. Awesome. Thank you. And, you know, along those same lines, and really what we want to talk about today is the new Medicare EID benefit um, for kidney transplant patients. So can you talk to us a little bit about what that is and who would qualify for this benefit? Yeah, absolutely. So this benefit, it's called, the long name is the Medicare Part B Immunosuppressive Drug Benefit. Uh, the short name is Medicare Part B ID. It is a new benefit that has never existed before. So it's not Medicare as everybody knows it already. It's not Medicare Part B as everybody knows it already. It's something that's completely new, completely novel, and will exist on January 1st, 2023 for the first time. What this new benefit is, is it's a limited benefit specifically for kidney transplant recipients who once had Medicare through their end-stage kidney disease benefit, but no longer have Medicare. If that type of person finds themselves uninsured, that's, that's where this benefit comes in. So they would have an opportunity to enroll in this Medicare Part B ID. It's a limited benefit in that it is not Part B. Part B is a a benefit that covers outpatient expenses, labs, doctor visits, specific medications, but this particular coverage, the Part B ID, is immunosuppressive drug coverage only. And that was actually leading to my next question. So, you know, talking about what is covered and what is not covered, you mentioned immunosuppressive drugs only. So, what would be some of those drugs or, you know, are there immunosuppressants that wouldn't be covered um, underneath, uh, under this benefit? So the medications that will definitely be covered are immunosuppressive drugs that are labeled or approved through the, the Medicare rulings for use in kidney transplantation. So for any listener out there who is a kidney transplant recipient, the chan chances are your immunosuppressive drugs will be covered, a majority of them. So most of you might be on tacrolimus, um, Varsis, XR, um, cyclosporin or Nerol, um, mycophenolate mulfetil or mycophenolate sodium, azathioprine, prednisone, um, sirolimus, everolimus. These medications are 
all covered by this benefit. What is not covered would be medications that are used for purposes other than immunosuppression. So your blood pressure medications, diabetic medications, medications that prevent infections or treat infections. If the purpose of the medication is anything other than to prevent rejection, it will not be covered. This is specifically for immunosuppressants. And inside that umbrella of immunosuppressive drugs, there are still a few drugs that would not be covered. So you can count on coverage for drugs that are available on the market, but not for drugs that would have to be hand compounded. So let's take oral liquids, for example. Um, Sirolimus and cyclosporin are sold commercially as an oral suspension. Those would be covered by this benefit. But if you needed tacrolimus as an oral suspension, that isn't available commercially uh, in that way. So when people get that, it's, it's handmade by their pharmacy for them. So the drug, the ingredient would be covered, but not the compounded product. It's really helpful. Um, and thinking about the cost, what would be kind of the average cost or what should patients expect to pay? So when thinking about costs, there, there are three distinct moments when money would need to be spent. Uh, the first of those is the premium, or that's the amount of money that you would spend every month just to have the benefit. So the premium for this new Medicare Part B ID coverage is going to be $97.10 per month. If there are there are a few exceptions to that where the premium might be higher, and that is uh, if your household is a particularly high income household, Social Security and Medicare define that as an income more than $97,000, then that pre per year that premium might be slightly higher, but the default premium that most people would pay for this benefit is $97.10 per month. The second expense or moment when money is spent is what they call a deductible. So the first time you use the benefit each year, the plan won't kick in and help pay for your medications until you meet your deductible. And that amount for 2023 is going to be $226. So the first 226 would be entirely yours to pay. Beyond that, the plan will contribute to help cover your medications. So that brings us to the copay, which is the third and final moment when money would be spent. This benefit is an 80% benefit. 80% of the cost of that medication, immunosuppressive medication, would be covered, and a patient then would have a 20% copay for each, each med each month that they're filling. You know, thinking about, you know, maybe some households that don't have that kind of money, are you aware of any additional benefit for subsets of patients? Yeah, this is an important question because while this new coverage is a benefit and it's it's placing an option where currently there's no option so right now people in this uninsured situation who once had medicare and now don't because of that um, 36 month expiration after a kidney transplant right now there is no option so this is better than previous state in the sense that there's a benefit where it didn't exist before. However, people who enroll in this new benefit and use it will need to know that it's it's not like the medications won't be covered in full. There is that premium, that deductible at the beginning of the year, and that 20% copay. Whether or not that's helpful to an individual is really a calculation that you will want to do. There's a chance that your medications are inexpensive and perhaps it might be less expensive for your own monthly budgeting to simply buy the medications as opposed to pay the premium plus 20% copay. Medications can change at any time, maybe a rejection, maybe a toxicity, a side effect. There are lots of reasons why an individual's medication regimen might need to include some more expensive meds. So there will definitely be people who 
can benefit from this. Like at least the plan will get them a little closer. As far as if you need the benefit, but the benefit isn't enough, like you're still struggling to pay for that 20%. There's some relationship, I should say, between states and the Medicare program where the states can assist with the, the premiums. Those are called qualified Medicare beneficiaries, specified low income beneficiaries or qualifying individuals. So there are some assistance there for the premiums, especially that it's not like a general rule that I could explain here because what that looks like would vary state by state. Can you kind of walk us through the different ways um, in which patients can enroll in this benefit? Yeah, so when enrolling, there is a core caveat that once you understand it, you'll also then understand why enrollment to set up the way it is. And that caveat is that this benefit is intended for people that have no other insurance. There are a couple reasons for that. The biggest reason is this new benefit is, is limited. It's just 20, you know, it's just coverage for immunosuppressive drugs. It does not cover labs or doctor visits or hospital stays. So if you are eligible for real, so to say, or, or comprehensive insurance, that is the way to go. So this benefit is meant for people who have no comprehensive insurance type option and need or want access to that help for the medication with the immunosuppressant medications. The way that the law that established this new benefit was written, it is critically important that only uninsured people enroll in this benefit. And if somebody's enrolled in this Medicare Part B ID and later on get alternate insurance coverage, say through an employer, or maybe you turn 65 and get full Medicare, um, at that moment, you would want to disenroll from this. So it's, it's wanting to pay very close attention and respect that need to capture an uninsured population that translates to the need for an attestation. I swear, I am a person who is uninsured. There's very specific language that needs to be read to or reviewed by the applicant before they would be activated on this new plan. And for that reason, I would say the default way to enroll is to call Social Security at 877-465-0355 and request to enroll in the Medicare Part B ID or the Medicare Part B immunosuppressive drug benefit. That agent will then ask questions, confirm that you once had Medicare through the end-stage kidney disease benefit, that you no longer have it or it's soon to terminate. Now, it's not the only way to apply. There is a form or a paper way that you could apply to. And I think what's helpful about seeing or knowing about this form is that the form itself also reviews and shares information about the program. So I want to share my screen so I can show everybody what that form looks like. So if I'm starting at the place where many of you listeners might be starting, it's just a straight Google's, Google page, what you will want to search for is the form by name. So it's called CMS 10798. And that will bring up the enrollment form for this Medicare Part B ID benefit. So once you're looking at it, you can see on this cover page for the form, it reviews who, what is this coverage, who cannot get the coverage, who can get the coverage. So a lot of what we already discussed is reviewed here. Um, and then down on the second page, it asks for the actual enrollment details. And so this is the form. You could fill this out and submit it to Social Security, or again, you could just call Social Security at that 877-465-0355 number and complete the enrollment over the phone. So thank you, Lisa. That was really helpful information to kind of see how a patient could enroll in this benefit or how to enroll. If a patient does decide to enroll, when would coverage begin? Coverage would begin, if you enroll now, 
the coverage will begin on January 1st, 2023. If you enroll, let's say in January, coverage would begin on February 1st. So the coverage will start the first day of the month after you enroll. Exceptions to that would be if you are currently covered by full Medicare through that end-stage kidney disease benefit and you haven't yet reached your 36 months post kidney transplant, if you are enrolling in this towards the end of that period um, because you don't want to have a lapse in the coverage once that terminates, then this new Part B ID will start in the first month after your full Medicare eligibility terminates. Lisa, thank you so much. I do want to make the listeners aware of a, a flyer or a resource that is out there that was developed by various subgroups within the American Society of Transplantation, one of them being the Community Education Committee. But it talks about um, the things that we talked about today and that you kind of walked us through with regard to the Medicare Part B ID benefit. That can be found on AST's Power to Save website. Um, and I would encourage you know, listeners to, to visit that. Um, again, just kind of walking through those frequently asked questions about who can enroll, what is covered, and again, a lot of the things that, that you discussed today. On behalf of the Community Education Committee, and the American Society of Transplantation as a whole. I want to thank you, Lisa, for chatting with us today. And I want to thank all of the viewers for tuning in. Thank you, it's a pleasure and uh, happy to help with any follow-ups that might be needed.